Hello everyone, good morning from Lahore, Pakistan. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I'm discussing thanatology from the last few lectures, and in thanatology, we are discussing the early changes. And today I'm starting the changes which appear in muscles after death. And the learning objective of today's lecture will be that I will be discussing the muscle changes, the changes which appear in muscles after death. And they are the primary flaccidity, the rigor mortis, and secondary relaxation or secondary flaccidity. I will discuss rigor mortis in detail, start discussion on rigor mortis, its definition, its distribution, progression, and what is the chemical basis of rigor mortis. And for that, we must understand what is the normal physiology of the muscles and what is altered physiology after death, which leads to rigor mortis. So the muscle changes which appear after death, they are the primary flaccidity, the first relaxation period of relaxation. This is because of loss of innervation, the cessation of CNS. Then after some time, the rigor mortis, that is after two to three hours, the rigor mortis or cadavatic rigidity starts. And the third change is the secondary relaxation. This is passing on to the next stage that is putrefaction. And when putrefaction sets in, the rigor mortis is passing off and the secondary relaxation starts. So the primary flaccidity, it appears immediately after death, at the moment of death, due to loss of innervation. This flaccidity usually lasts for two to three hours. All the muscles of the body get completely relaxed. The muscle tone is lost and body limbs can be moved in any direction. Now the rigor mortis. Rigor mortis, this is a picture showing the body in rigor. Rigor means rigidity and mortis is depth. So this means the rigidity after death. It's a condition characterized by stiffening, shortening, and opacity of the muscles. It follows primary relaxation and it is due to chemical changes. Involving the proteins of the muscle fibers and it marks the end of cellular or the molecular life of the muscle fibers. So by definition, it's a condition characterized by stiffening of all the muscle fibers of the body after death, which is due to certain chemical changes in the proteins of the muscle fibers. It is associated with little but not measurable shortening of the muscles. It is succeeded by primary flaccidity, that is, before it, there is primary flaccidity and is followed by secondary relaxation, that is, secondary flaccidity. The distribution and progression. All the muscles of the body are involved simultaneously, but it is detectable first in the muscles of the eyelids and the face. That means the small muscles of the face then in the neck and in the trunk muscles and in the end finally in the muscles of the limbs. So it involves short muscles first and larger muscles later. This is known as proximodistal progression or head to toe prog progression or craniocaudal progression. That is proximodistal progression head to toe progression. 
because in the head and face there are small muscles. So it sets early or first in the small muscles of the face and head and then progresses distally to the limbs. So this progression is proximodistal or head to toe. Depending upon various factors, all the muscles, they develop rigor in almost 12 hours. So that means it takes 12 hours to develop complete rigor. And the whole body then assumes a board-like rigidity. The whole body gets stiffened. And this is the stiffening that a body is placed between two stretches, but it is so stiffened that it is not relaxing in the center. Then once it developed, it stays or persists for 12 hours. It takes 12 hours for the development and for the next 12 hours, it will stay. And then it will start passing off in the next 12 hours. That is after 24 hours, it will start passing off in the similar fashion from the head to toe. First in the head and small muscle and then in the larger muscle. In the similar fashion as it has developed. When it fully passes off, it passes on to the next stage, which is second relaxation, and which is because of putrefaction. Now, when the rigor is fully developed, the joints of the muscle, they become fixed. The state of flexion or extension of the joints will depend upon the position of the trunk and the limbs at the time of death. If the rigor mortis develops in the body when it was supine, that is head facing upward at the time of death, then the large joint will be slightly flexed. That is the knee joint, the hip joint, they will be slightly flexed. And the joint of the toes and the fingers, they will be markedly flexed. But the big toes, they are slightly flexed. In fact, this flexion joint is due to a little shortening of the muscles of the forearms and the legs. And this is the knee joint showing a little flexion, but here it is marked flexion. Now, what is the basis of Riker mortis? It is the chemical basis which leads to Riker mortis. Riker mortis has got nothing to do with the nerve supply as it has seen that it also develops in paralyzed muscles. Now, we should understand what is the normal physiology in living in the muscles. As we know, the muscles, they are contractile elements which are made up of protein filaments and they are myosin and actin, and they interdigitate with each other, less in the relaxed state and more in the contracted state. They interdigitate, but less in the relaxed state and more in the contracted state. And this is a pictorial diagram. The above is showing the relaxed state and below is the contracted state. The, they are interdigitating. This is another diagrammatic representation of the relaxed and the contracted state. Relaxation and contraction, both they are the physiological normal function of muscles which are controlled by ATP. And ATP is stored in high concentration in the muscles. As we know, there is a balanced production of ATP from glycogen stores and there are certain chemical processes which break down glycogen and in the result, the ATP production is going on. And this is a picture of the electron microscope mitochondria, which is the, uh, where the metabolism is going on. And during life, due to the availability of ATP enzyme in the muscle, the muscle can contract and relax. 
Krebs cystic acid cycle. This is also one of the cycle of metabolism. And during this, also the ATPs are being formed. Then there is aerobic glycolysis. That is the break up, breakdown of glycogen aerobically. And during this process, also the ATPs are formed. So these are the chemical processes which are going on in the mitochondria and elsewhere, uh, leading to the production of ATPs. In altered physiology at death, what happens, what changes appear after death that this physiology is altered? It is said that in temporary period of primary flaccidity, when resynthesis of ATP goes on, as we know that anaerobic glycogenolysis, breakdown of glycogen till the glycogen reserves are available, anaerobically this glycogen keeps on breaking. And this anaerobic glycogenolysis, when it leads, there is also accumulation of the lactic acid. So till the temperature permits, till the accumulation of lactic acid permits, the anaerobic glycogenolysis will go on and ATP production will continue. And this is the period during which by the supply of ATP, the body remains in a relaxed state and warm also. So the onset of rigidity will therefore will be directly influenced by the glycogen content of the muscle at the time of death. This glycogen content will also depend upon the state of rest or activity of muscles immediately before death. If the body was active, too much muscles were being uh, functioning, the ATPs and the glycogen were being utilized and less glycogen will be available after death. So Riker Mortis will set early. The lack of oxygen means that no, the energy cannot be obtained from the glycogen and the big glycogen glycolysis, but no, it will go on anaerobically. Riker Mortis is also temperature dependent and it occurs within muscle cells as the lack of oxygen. That means when the temperature, which is maintained for some time by production of ATP, anaerobic glycogenolysis, the body will remain relaxed, where then after it will be start stiffening. So when the ATP production ceases, the glycogen reserves will be depleted and resynthesis of ATC ATPs will not be possible. After that, the ATP now will be starting anaerobically. When aerobic during life stops, then anaerobic starts after death and there will be accumulation of lactic acid. And this lactic acid produced as a result of anoxic respiration or anaerobic glycogenolysis in the cell cytoplasm. And this will increase the acidity. And in the presence of low ATP and increased acidity, the actin and myosin filaments form a gel. Now the actin and myosin filaments, they will become fixed like gel, which is known as actomyosin gel. So now they will not be interdigitating, but they will become fixed in a gel form. So the result of this cellular metabolic change, the muscle become fixed, stiff, and rigid. And this is a diagrammatic representation of the relaxed, contracted, and muscle in the rigel. So Summary of today's lecture is that we have learned that what are the changes which appear in the muscles after death. And we know that they are primary flaccidities, rigor mortis, and secondary relaxation. Then we started discussion uh, in detail on the rigor mortis. We understood what is by definition rigor mortis and its distribution, its progression, how it progresses. And I have also discussed the chemical basis of Riker mortis. That is 
uh, what is the normal physiology of muscles during life and what is the altered physiology of the muscles after death, which leads to development of Riker mortis. So thank you very much. This is the uh, first lecture of the Riker mortis. We'll continue in the next lecture. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name. Thank you very much.